Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've just received this beautiful book. It came out yesterday uh, by Angela Harding, who was famous for her illustrations and also her printing work. And um, they've compiled this book together to um, showcase those as a colouring book. Now, um, it's a square book, but it's just like a centimetre shorter than um, a Joanna Basford book, uh, taller, sorry, than a Joanna Basford book. This is the back cover. It's got a beautiful, smooth feel to it. It says, create your own artworks with Angela Hardin's elegant illustra illustrations as your, as your inspiration and guide. Um, so you can imagine my excitement when, you, when I knew that we were going to get pictures to, um, to look at. So the front cover um, folds out here like this. On the back it's just plain, just plain white. Um, it folds out like this. And the back cover does the same. But what's really neat about this, I hope you can see that, is that both the front cover flaps and the back cover flaps make up one image. So this is the kind of thing we're going to get in the book, the kind of illustrations we're going to get in the book. Um, and this paper is very smooth, really good quality. The paper is perforated. It is uh, glued and stitch bound. And in the back here, this is what I got excited about, is demonstration of how the um, images will look when they're coloured. And I thought in this book that um, inks would using inks and a little bit of pencil would bring these image bring this imagery to life i mean look at this one oh look at that for spring daffodils and uh, we're going to go through it and look at this lovely fox down here so that's the kind of um images that you can expect on the front cover we've got this looks like a uh, woodpecker to me i'm not sure i'm not that um I'm not that much of an ornithologist, um, but Angela does tell us. So this is published by Flame Tree Publishing um, and copyright 2024. So here's a coloured illustration then of that bird. Can you imagine these with inks though? Oh, tells you a little bit about Angela Harding herself. Some of her works. And... Let's get into it. So each page is perforated down here, so you can take them out, like I said. So I'm just going to zoom out slightly, so I can get you the whole thing in. There we go. So this is a section of this page here, with colour on it. And then you get illustration based on Angela Harding's Wild Light. So yeah, I'm thinking, a bit like Carolina Kupakowska, I know that ink would look magical in this book. Um, so that you can bring the colours out in other spaces. Um, and then you've got... Um, is it avocats? 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 Birds there, look at that. Can you just... That, how much that black is going to pop out when we've added other colours to this. I mean, she's got a lovely blue-grey water round the bird. And yeah, it's just going to be incredible. I was thinking that maybe I'd do a quick colour along, um, a quick colour with me in this book before we do Joanna Basford, um, just to sort of show you. But I can just see, visualise when you've got ink on the page, how wonderful this is. And I don't use the round blending tool. I don't. I use something else. And I always have done with my inks. I've never really been able to get on with the blending tools. I've got the brushes. Um, I don't know if I've got any to hand. You know the big like makeup brushes. I use those too, but I um, I've always used something else. So maybe we could do this together. I think it would be incredible. Oh look at this! So not only do you get this incredible fox. Look at his face. He's terrified. <laughs> um, but you look at that scenery in the background. And just a little bit of ink. I don't think these pages would take that long at all. Ink, watercolour. I'm not sure. It's not the thickest of paper. It feels really good quality. Um, not Joanna Basford thick, I don't think. Um, no, but 
but really good quality, very smooth. And then we've got this beautiful owl. It's, it's not just the showcase piece that's in this centre. It's the rest of the image that goes with it. I adore it. This is from Amazon UK. Um, and I'm assuming, I don't know, because I just don't have the time to check out other countries, really, other than Amazon, Japan, of course, for um, to see um, stock availability and things. But um, this came from Amazon UK. I will certainly put a link for it down below so that if you want, uh, you want to be naughty and buy a copy, you can do that. I'm not an affiliate. It's just I bring things to the channel that I do believe in and people have been so kind enough to give me. Look at this spring page. I mean, that is just beautiful with very little effort with ink and maybe a tiny bit of detailing with pencil. That is going to be a phenomenal image. And I actually think if we're doing it with inks, the more black, the better, to be honest. It's um, you don't have vast areas to colour in to shade with your ink so you're not going to have to worry about splotchiness and things you just do little sections at a time and fill them up it's just going to be incredible and like she says um, this one's called horses and flowers so it's up to you to interpret I would have said poppies because of the poppy head type thing here but you don't have to colour them like that this one's a pheasant and then we've got the um, house in the background and then Jay in an oak tree. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I hope you like it, guys, because I am up, totally up. Now, if we wanted, ever wanted an easy membership book, this would be it. If you wanted to learn your inks, wow, this would be it. Uh, Red Shank and Oyster Catcher. So I'm thinking that I might finish this and get my inks out and do a little bit with you so you can see what they look like and and um because I can just visualize it being spectacular. This is a Christmas curlew. She is a um she is from the UK, so I'm not I'm saying that I'm assuming that a lot of these are inspired by um UK wildlife. This is blackbirds and berries. And obviously if we want colour you could use um, uh, acrylic pens. Gel pens would probably go over some of this black to put the berries in. Oh, I love it. But I'm sure you, you could shade with pencil too. We'll try. A Suffolk Kingfisher. See, it's just stunning. I, I love it. And this page, wow. So is it um, Rathlin hairs? But I love it. The hours that must take to cut that out of, say, lino or something to print that in such good quality is, yeah, is so, so gorgeous. This is a ship and curlew. Oh. And then we've got red deer. So you could look them up and try to recreate the colours. However, I do feel this book is better spontaneous. You know, if you've got an idea for colours, go for it. I don't think we necessarily need to do as much reality as we would normally. You know, I think that's just... Oh, I love this page. Look at this. This is the common. It says, so we've got horses in the background. Oh, the little butterfly. Oh, it's just beautiful. And you can see the textures she's used to make that sky, those clouds. Isn't that clever? Mm -hmm. Very clever. And then we've got um, the wild silence. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I'd love a bit of wild silence. Look at that house um, on the coast. Oh. And those clouds. Yeah, it's just adorable. Turns at sea. And see the like the blue grey colour she's used for the water, isn't that clever? It's lovely. 
um, has in conversation, isn't that, I love this one, look at this. And we've got a blackbird at the top there pinching the berries. I just love everything about it. I just think, and the minute I felt the paper, I thought, wow, this is going to be, it's so smooth. I'm hoping that it will take ink anyway. We'll test it. Um, hairs and wild grasses. I love the silhouette in the background there and she's got colour inspiration for you there. Scottish Robins. That's a lovely winter page. I have to remember that one for Christmas. Sorry, I'm getting excited. Um, and this one's called Seal Song. We've got the boat and the lighthouse in the background. Down in Cornwall, you can see quite a few seals playing in the water. Two curlews at Deben. I'm sorry, excuse my ignorance, but obviously some coastal stretch. It'd be nice to look them up because, you know, I'm from the UK, but I don't know some of these creatures. And this says two Yorkshire whippets. So we've got one laying down here and then a black one. And then all the fields done with that um, detailing. You can see how she's cut a pattern out for each of them. Frogs and flax. That's beautiful, isn't that gorgeous? And then we've got a little boy here that's been catching things in a jar. I used to do that when we were little, jam jar fishing. For the minnows. Highland warblers. Wow. Oh, I just, I won't keep banging on about it, but Rose Cottage. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, and there's the couple there looking at each other. And we've got Rambling Rose here. And our beautiful puppy. These look like maybe snowdrops. Oh, they're just beautiful. Table and chairs there. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. And this one's called The Salt Path. So they're obviously doing a coastal walk. A lighthouse again and there's even little bits of white that's been left to depict the light coming from the lighthouse. I hope you can see that. Um, fishing otter. Gosh, isn't he gorgeous? It's not very often books come out like this um, that are different but... Um, grasp my attention and uh, ease and that's what I've been looking for you know I've done um, a bit of a naughty thing and my finger slipped for some Amazon Japan books which I'm very excited about and they're also really easy books but I but not like this style and it's just it's very unique and I love it oh look at his face this is a marsh owl Look at that, so you've got the whole thing. I know you only get a section there, but we'll have a look at the images at the back. There are a lot of pages in here. So we've got Kingfisher and Squirrel. Love squirrels. They're so funny. Hairs at Oxford Ness. Isn't that lovely? And she's got that depth in the picture as well. It doesn't just look flat. It's very clever. Summer Fox is at Mask Hall. I don't know, I'll have to look it up and see where Mask Hall is. See, that's the other thing I like about colouring books is you do learn stuff. It's not just mindless stuff all the time. You do learn stuff. This is an October Owl. Now this page is stunning. And we've got leaves in the forefront falling down here. And the owl being really prominent. Part of the night scene. Look at that. Love it. Highland deer. Absolutely gorgeous. August blackbird. Quite a lot of detail to take in on some of the pages as well when you first look. You know, you, it looks simple, but there's quite a lot of detail there, actually. 
sorry, I've got my cup of tea, I'm freezing. Blackbirds and mulberry tree. Isn't that lovely? And I like the the designs aren't all jet we get full page spread, but not all of them. Oh now I've just turned to all of them that are. Like this one in a a circular circular design. I like that. Am I just rambling and talking rubbish? Have they all been full pages? I could have sworn there was another small one. Am I, um, have I lost the plot, folks? I think I might have done. Is that the only one? Yep. <laughs> Ignore me. I don't know. What, where did that come from then? I don't know that. How bizarre. And if I just. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, ignore that last comment. Clearly not. Cute nightingale. Early nesters. Winter squirrel. I mean, that's going to be... Get your blends right and you're away. Just a little bit of sky. And I would keep it simple. I don't think we should try and overcomplicate it. So here are the full illustrations here that we can copy. Or use as inspiration. So, um, but they are very simple, they are very simply done, um, the colouring. Uh, I love this one. Look at that when it's got colour on it. Isn't that gorgeous? Where's the other one that I fell in love with? There's the um, blackbirds and berries. And there's that, the common, you know, where I was saying about how she cut out the different shapes for fields. Uh, let's see what else there is. Uh, I don't like en ending flip-throughs. I love that first impression. Hairs in conversation. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm sat in snow. Um, I'll just move you around so you can get a view of, of how they've done them. There's the frogs and flax. Just looking for, oh wow, look at that, October Owl. Look at that, when it's coloured. And the Summer Foxes at that hall that I don't know. Mask Hall. And then, sorry. And then the last ones. Look at those fields there coloured in. There we go, and then we get back to the, the back cover, which is very thick card, and then back to the beginning. So there we are, Angela Harding. Okay, so um, I'm going to go off and um, pull some inks out, and we're going to um, we're going to try a little bit. I don't know whether it'll be a full colour with me or not. You'll know before me. <laughs> um, but um, I'm going to pull some inks out and we're going to have a go in this book, in this beautiful book. All right, I'll see you in a second. OK, guys, so I did a little testing. This was like a partially coloured one already. Um, and it's fine. The paper is absolutely fine with the inks as long as you don't go over and over it. Anything water based um, will, will bleed through. But um, yeah, I think so. I've got my inks. This is how I store mine. These are in paper storage, Amazon plastic ones. Um, I've got them out and I've got them ready and I just thought we'll go for it shall we should we give it a shot so if I come in a little closer just so you can see I thought this would be a great demonstration page I just want you to see how beautiful these images are going to be when you've done it so I will um, show you the inks and tell you their name they are this is shabby shutters now what I've got here is I brought a, a pack of a million of them um, eyeshadow applicators uh, makeup sponges and um, I just find that you can get into tiny little details and much more controlled which perfect perfect for this page so I'm going to go in with shabby shutters which is a very pale um, yellowy green which is perfect for this page and I'm just loading my sponge just lightly and then I'm really lightly taking that this sponge and I'm going to apply it 
and don't keep scrub don't scrub go back go back over it if you've missed a spot when it's dry we're going to cover that leaf and the good thing about the reason why inks pop to mind is um, we can go over the black edge and the ink won't show up I'm not sure about um, uh, what's the other one not distress um, not distress ink what's the other one oh, my goodness my brain it's so annoying folks um, it's no it's chalk more chalk based what's the one I'm thinking of I don't know it might come to me if I stop trying to recall it. Um, that possibly would cover over the black. I don't know because I don't have those. I only have Distress Inks. So these little sponges are just incredible. Let me switch tips and use the other tip. So I've got the broader one. The actual... That's better, Lucy. Why didn't you use that in the first place? You get a nice smooth finish. Like this. Then you can go back to your detailing part and just plop it in there, like that. But this side's better. And I did buy, let me show you, just in case you're thinking of doing this. Um, I did buy a ton of these with a handle so I didn't get because I get really messy when I'm doing it but um, unfortunately they like they move they're too squishy whereas the ones that um, these ones that I'm using have got they're really rigid so that helps to keep that smooth blend okay what we want to do is make sure that that's dry really before we go over so that it doesn't come through your page you can see no you can't you can see a bit of shadowing and that'll dry and go but um, these are, anyway, they're relatively single-sided apart from the image on that side. So I'm not going to worry about it, really. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to move on to our Kingfisher's body. And I've got, here, I've got squeezed lemonade. And I'm going to put that on the body. So I'm just seeing where I want these colours. I've got a, an image of a Kingfisher up. Because you know what I'm like. I worry what um, I worry about getting things wrong and people being cross with me. Okay, so we want um, a little bit round his eye. Here. And we're going to bring that down into that body. And they always dry lighter, so don't panic about... Oh gosh, Lucy, that's acidic. And then... Um, I've got a little trick up my sleeve, if it is, which I will share with you, of course. I'm just trying to see, is that bit, yeah, that bit's blue. Okay, and then we're going to, don't, we are going to go over with another colour, but um, I just want to, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to use any pencil in this, I'm just going to show you what it looks like with just ink and how easy it can be. Okay, so I think that's it, is it for yellow? going to put some other colours in there obviously. Um, some of them vary, some of them have got a little bit of, um, but we'll leave it for now. We'll let that colour dry. Let's go back to our greens. I know I've got a mixture of the large ones and the little ones. So this is um, peeled paint and I'm going to take my, um, I've got my fat one loaded. <laughs> And I'm going to take the very tip and I'm just going to stroke that in. And just be really gentle and enjoy it. So let your hand and your body relax and then just stroke that colour in. You can be really controlled with these. It's They're so cool. And I've been really, really looking for a book um, that I can do this in. I've got the Dover publication book. Oh, I've gone over the edge. Darn it. I've got the Dover publication book um, the, night, the night before Christmas, but the inks bleed through that paper. It's, um, yeah, it's not great. 
So I know the blend's not great at the moment, so just bear with me and let me show you. So it's a bit like layering watercolours. So I'm using the finer end tip here on these little bits. And see that because this one's a bit more squishy, you don't get that um, you don't get as much ink out, which can be a bit of a blessing sometimes. Okay, so we're putting our dark and that will dry lighter again. And then when that's dry, I'm going to go back over with our original colour. All right. Some leaves. And I said to you about keeping it simple, didn't I? And not overdoing these images. Right. Salty ocean. We're going to go in and put some brightness on this little bubba. <laughs> Our kingfisher needs to be bright. So, um... I'm just trying to see the top of the head. And I'm going to use the tip of this, the top of it, this the very tip part. And I'm going to put that on his head. And then we're going to come back in with different colours as well. Just to change him up. They're always him. <laughs> My animals are always him. It was pointed out to me to the, uh, the, other, <laughs> the other day, which I thought was hilarious, that um, it is hilarious that I was colouring in um, around the world. I was colouring Mr Fogarty uh, the Alpine way and um, I was colouring a cow, which I was calling... Um, a he and it had udders. Yeah. <laughs> That's how my life rolls. Alright, so I'm just gently pulling that out there. And I'll show you a trick in a minute to blend that out. Right, and I think what we're going to do is pull this down here on the wing. You have to be brave, folks. Be brave. And don't worry about covering up it in its entirety because I want to put other colours in there. We're going to put another colour in there in a minute. I won't squeeze lemonade up the side there really, don't I? Okay. And then let that dry. I know it looks messy, but it won't. Okay, let's get that squeeze lemonade. I don't know if I need to reload it. Let me just put that... All right, okay, no, it's perfect. So we'll just go up that side with our squeeze lemonade. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my um, shabby shutters, which is our very palest green. Could do with a bit of paper for blotting, really. So get a scrap piece of paper. And then you can just make sure that you haven't got too much on your brush or your sponge. And then we're going to go back over that with our shabby shutter, which is the palest of our colours. Just like we would really with pencil. And I felt like I'd made a holy mess of that one there, that one. So let's just see what happens. And there's no reason we couldn't drop a little bit of squeezed lemonade in there either. OK, and we have to let that dry. Let's have a look at the back of the page, see if I've over wet it. Nope. Can you see? Just a bit of shadowing and that's because it's still wet. OK, now I'm going to go back to our yellow patch and I'm going to take fossilised amber. Um, which is a lovely sort of orangey colour. So we need to brighten him up. So I'm loading it both sides and on the tip. And the other trick is that um, I heard, I'm sure I heard it from um, Tim Holtz himself, that actually if the reason I number mine is because if you don't wash them off continuously and you leave the ink on there, they're easier to use than a, than a clean sponge. 
So we're going to go in here and we're going to start to darken him up. So I'm just going to drag it out. And we could make this a whole lot quicker, but I don't want to. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I, I will do the Joanna Basford, but I just wanted to show you this because I was so excited when I saw it about the possibilities of just having a, you know, 99% book with just inks. I've got all these gorgeous colours. And, um, you know, you go in fits and starts with your um, supplies. I do. Like, there was a time that everything was based with ink. Um... Okay, don't overdo it, Lucy, because you will bleed through the page. Yeah, everything was based with ink, and then I, um, you know, I don't know, you just, then you get something else out, and they become the new favourite. Uh, we need some up here. So, yeah, and I don't, don't overload your brush or your sponge either. Just tap it really lightly. Um, you're more likely to be able to move it. Here, okay. Now, I can't find my packet of these. I've got millions of them somewhere. So, on my Amazon wish list, these are like the copy of um, the soft tools for pan pastels. I think they're like, um, I don't know, I haven't got it up. Six pounds, seven pounds, something like that for a whole pack of them. Here. And all the sponges. Now, they're obviously not soft tools, but... Um, I've loaded it with salvage patina and we're going to see how that goes. I want some like turquoise in here and this is a, the most incredible colour. So if this works, this will be a game changer for me, these. Oh, look. Now, I don't think these sponges won't last forever. They're not. Um, but look at that for intricate spaces. A little bit in there. So, um, yeah, they're on my wish list. If you want to go and have a look, I'll leave them there because they're quite difficult to find. And um, soft tools are so expensive. I am going to invest next month when I've got some money left because I've been really naughty this month. I'm going to invest in some more. Okay, so I'm just pushing that beautiful um, salvage patina into that salty ocean colour. So can you see about just how easy and beautiful these pages are going to be? Let's put a little bit more around that eye. And that the blend there has um, smoothed itself out but we can go back in. Or you can just then go in with pencil. I'm going to get that down here. I mean, you could spend, like we do with our pencils, you could spend hours and hours and hours blending different colours once they're dry over the top. Okay. So that was um, Salvage Patina, which is an incredibly beautiful colour. I'm thrilled about those. To use those in small places with ink is a great thing. So I'd never tried it and I just thought, oh no, I haven't got a I haven't got a sponge for salvage patina. <sighs> I thought well, I would give it a go. So a little trick here to ease this blend. This is picket fence, which is just white. And um, I'm gonna load my tip up here with the white. Now it will the colour will come off on the sponge. The blue will come off on the sponge because they're water-based. And so I'm just going to go over that bit. So instead of making it even more blotchy, the idea being... Let me get... These are not great for my hands, but... The idea being we use it as a little bit of a... I help with a blend. I don't want to do anywhere else because, but because it picks up colour. Can you see? Yeah, I've got a little bit. Uh, 
and it will lighten. We can use it as a little bit of a blender on places that we might have fluffed up. So let me try that leaf and see what happens. I've got to try and get it at the right angle because my hands. See what happens there. See? Blended. <laughs> I'm quite tempted to get another sponge out for that um for our kingfisher and do another colour. Right, what we haven't tried is um, this colour, which is Prize Ribbon, which is a very dark, um, too excited to talk now, a very dark blue. And I've been collecting them over the years, I've collected them, I've brought them second hand off eBay and different places, so I have all the colours now. And I've got the new, two new ones. Um, lost shadow and scorched timber um, so because I do absolutely love them and this is now a game changer for me so I'm going to load that up you see how dark and beautiful that is oh it's gorgeous colour okay let's get that on that tip so I can do a bit of try and do a bit of detailing okay so I'm going to want um Gently, gently, gently. Yeah, I know it looks terrifying when you first put it down. So pull a little bit of that colour out there. And we'll have some up here. Let's pull that dark blue out. Well, these work really well. Round his eye. Now I'm getting too excited and I'm going overboard now with our dark blue, but we'll go back in again. I'll let it dry and I'll go back in um, and go over with our lighter colours. But it's just a bit of a demonstration and trying to save you a bit of money if you're... Um, thinking about going into inks they these amazing but also these are a whole lot cheaper so you've got a teeny tiny detail end there and a fat end um, okay so we need to let that dry what else was I going to show you um, I've got a spare powder blue prisma here so I'm going to go in just with that. I'll show you that. And of course we can put pencil on it too. But I don't think we need to. It's very wet now. See it hasn't come through. Let me pull the page over to show you properly. It hasn't come through. There's a little bit of ghosting here but that's going to dry up. Um, this is the one that I was doing earlier which was partially coloured. And there is a tiny little brown spot here. I'm going to be honest with you. That's my own fault. And that's for being too heavy handed. And not letting things dry in between. Okay what else can we do? Actually let me get a Prisma. Just to show you. That's still very wet. Just to show you. Um, right block your ears. I'm going to get my heat tool out. I, don't, I hate using it. Because it crinkles the pages. But. Block your ears. Right, okay. That's dry now. <laughs> Okay, let's get some prismas and see what we can do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back over the wings, so don't worry about that. I know it looks like a hot mess, but let's get... What am I looking for, Lucy? Oh, let's see. I want a dark orange. Let's try a little bit of um, goldenrod. 
pencil sharpener. And there's even like we can then add some brighter orange. I mean, I'd do this with ink, but I just want to show you. I'll put it up on um, YouTube as a ink demonstration as well. I just want to show you what these um, incredible books are going to look like. Let's have a little bit of orange around there too. Let's blend that in. And on the back wing here. You don't really need to do this, I don't think, anyway. But I'm just, it's just, um, right, I want a brighter orange. Let's go in with orange. Let's try that. Right, so I'm doing it really lightly. The paper loves them. I'm not going to mess with it too much. I'm just showing you that what you can do, the possibilities. And then put that back. Um, I'm going in with Canary Yellow. Because I lost my own fault. I lost that then with that. Orange. I lost the brightness. There we go. And we'll have it there as well. Okay, all right, so pencils work beautifully on this paper too. Right, I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to take my um, white picket fence again. And I'm going to lighten that up. Spent all that time blending and then just got carried away with my... See how it picks the colour up? Um, and then got carried away with that sponge. But this is a really neat trick. And if you like, you've got a blend that you're like, oh, crikey, I've ruined the whole page now. I've got circles, I've got all this. This this is just, a, you know, really great. And then we can just go back in and cover up any fluff ups that you're not happy with. I think that's pretty much was it. OK. So I'm going to go back in with, I think I'll go back in with um, Salty Ocean, which was the lighter blue. And maybe I don't need to load the sponge because I'd already done it. So I'll put the lid back on. So this is Salty Ocean. And let's go back over that hot mess that I made with that dark blue and see what happens now. Leave that bit in the centre, the, the, the um, patina colour. Okay. So can you see what happens if, like me, you carry on faffing about, I ruin things? Okay. Now, just to make these a little bit, bit more acorn-like, or I don't know, just to show you about blends, I'm going to put a little bit of this squeezed lemonade. I'm not going to put um, colours up. Oh, I can't get my hand to work. Yeah, see. Um... I'm not going to put colours up on the screen and go into all the editing. Well, maybe I will. OK, so I'm just patting squeeze lemonade onto some of these leaves. Like that. I don't need all of them. Just random spots. There we go. And we should just get a really nice... We'll have a little bit on his beak as well. In the eye. I don't know, just playing around like you do. Oh, look, look at that beautiful green that that makes. See, so I mean, it's just there's so many possibilities. Let's drop some of that on these feathers here. Oh, look, isn't that gorgeous? So we can really bring out different colours. Let's do a little bit of that, I think, on his head. Here. That makes a real kingfisher blue, doesn't it? Or green. There you go. 
So you can be really inventive and play. Um, and it's like mixing paint. Look at that. I'll maybe put a little bit more up here on this dark blue and see what happens. On that line of that wing. And then, of course, step away. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm going to put it back in there. I'm going to clean this sponge off now because that's going to be very green. There we go. All right. So, I am going to dry him off. So, mind your ears. Or maybe I won't. I'll leave him like that, but um, his colours will dry much more subtle, actually. So what I'm going to do is go off. I am going to edit the video and put the colours up for you so you know what I used. Um, and then I will be back in a minute and I will um, show you it when it's completely dry so you can get a view of what it looks like and the reverse page. How about that? All right, lovely. See you in a sec. Okay, folks, I'm back and he's dry. Well, I've dried him off. Um, I'm just waiting for my editing suite to sort itself out. <laughs> um, let's have a look at the back. So there is some ghosting. But um, in my honest opinion, I think the page looked better before I demonstrated all the different things. But this is the reason why I went for a little one. I think the simpler you do it, the better. I think... I think these images lend themselves beautifully to just simple ink blends. So if you want to learn inking, the other thing, that was another thing, a very important thing I wanted to show you actually, um, is these dewdrop inks. Now some of them are chalk, so be careful with that if you're using it on a black because they will show. And then the uh, they do different ones. So is this... Um, this is chalk ink and this isn't so um, if you're going to look for them they're a whole lot cheaper than um, distress inks but they work the same but um, be careful when you're looking because like I say some of them will be chalk and some of them are ink um, so just be careful uh, but yeah they're gorgeous they're gorgeous and they work I've had them right from when I started colouring so five years ago and um, they're still juicy and I think you can get refills for them so go and have a look at explore because you might hate inking but you also might find that that, that it's a part of your colouring that you've, you've completely missed out because you thought you wouldn't be able to do it but some simple supplies are buying the um, picket fence to use as a blender is a game changer and play around with different tools um, where are mine? Oh gosh, I don't know where I've put them. Oh, I don't know where I've put them. I'm trying to find the brushes that we use. Where have I put them then? Oh, I've had a whole clear up and I can't find anything. What the heck? I don't know. Yeah, these are the um, Tim Holtz ones, or Ranger. These are the, the mini. These are their mini blending sticks, and I hate them. They don't work half as well as um, the others. And then, of course, you get. Um, I'm sorry, this has turned into a bit of a tutorial thing. Um, you can get the blending ones that come on a handle, and they're Velcro, and you stick them on. I hate them. <laughs> I don't like them. And then I'm trying to find my brushes. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, here's one. You've probably all seen them, but in case you haven't, these come in packs on Amazon. And they're makeup brushes, basically. But if you put in blending brush, they'll come up. And these are great for big spaces in the background. They're also great for gel crayons as well, to put in big spaces on the background. They come in all sorts of different sizes. You can get teeny tiny ones. However, it would appear that I've... Oh, no, there they are. here so I put them in an old uh, these were my a uh, hoo-hoo water-based marker case and I put them in there um, but you can get like even smaller ones than this so you can get more detail and they are quite soft but they're good for backgrounds but you do still get that sort of harsh blurry edge 
so I prefer um, my little technique but you might not so play around with supplies look at things that you could use to apply the ink with and you might get on a whole lot better so I'll stop my incessant rambling that is Angela Harding's beautiful new book um, oh it's just called Angela Harding's colouring book isn't it <laughs> but yeah I would oh my gosh I'm gonna I'm going to have so much fun with this but, and I'm going to keep it as simple as possible instead of like doing all these blends and stuff like that I'm just going to keep it really simple just two or three colours maybe and leave it like that love it all right thank you so much for spending time with me today I hope you've enjoyed it it turned into a little impromptu ink tutorial which I hadn't intended but I'm glad I did I really enjoyed it all right, so until we meet again for our Joanna, or maybe there'll be something in between, you never know. Take really good care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.